Okay, so here we are. I've got everything opened up. Uh, I'm going to throw a couple of drives into my new uh, QNAP Turbo NAS. Um, it's a two bay uh, drive with a maximum of uh, two terabytes per drive and we're going to set it up with uh, mirror one. I'm actually just going to be doing one drive uh, initially because I've used the other drive to store a whole bunch of data. So I'm going to get it set up with one drive first, um, get that data transferred onto the Turbo NAS and then from there um, migrate the single drive uh, over to a RAID 1 um, array and uh, volume rather and we'll take things from there so put that out of the way first bay get it slid out um, we've got a bunch of screws that come with the device not really sure what the different colors are for unless uh, the silver ones and the black ones but uh, whatever so let's pop it in there Okay, line up the screw holes. I'm actually going to be using the eSATA connection um, directly to this other drive I have here to um, to get the data copied over. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to do that from the web interface, and uh, I've actually already got the power plugged in under the desk here. So we're just going to power that up, and um, somewhere I've got a Ethernet cable here as well. Plugged in, plugged in. Now, these are hot swappable drives, but um, as is normal recommendation, if you don't have to hot swap them, don't. Always shut the power off first. Um, so that being said, before I throw this in, I'm going to pull the power out. I'll throw this guy in here. Now, these aren't your server-type drive trays, but as long as you hold that up a little bit when you're sliding it in, just give it a little push. And clip it down, should be good to go. Okay, so here we are. We're going to have a look at the uh, software side of the um, Turbo NAS. I'm just um, on my router here, going to see what the DHCP address it's given to the NAS. Got 135. Okay, so it's um, forwarded us over the admin um, for the web config uh, is at port 8080 and um, it seems to be taking us to some form of quick config that says there's a drive here. Press OK to initialize it. So it's going to be setting up our first drive. It says it's installing firmware as well. Initialize the hard drive and install the firmware. One of the things that's not a hundred percent clear to me on this whole system is where it puts the operating system. There's 16 megs of, uh, of flash on the turbo NAS, but that's not really a whole hell of a lot when you start getting into um, things like PHP, MySQL, the Q package support, and a whole bunch of the other software that uh, that not only comes with it but can be loaded on afterwards. So it's possible that it makes a little partition for itself. Please update the system firmware with the image file enclosed in the product CD. I'm not much one to use product CDs, but I happen to have downloaded the latest firmware yesterday. And ought to have it in here somewhere. Uh-huh. Come on. Turbo NAS, manual. Is your manual? 
Okay, there it is. TS-219-341. Seems to be zipped, though. Up. Okay, updating firmware. It is um, really important when you start out doing anything like this. Make sure you get the the most current firmware because it can play a big role in how the uh, how the drives are set up, um, partitioned in your RAID array and whatnot. It's one of those things you want to make sure you have the the best firmware before you get started, and uh, then you don't have to worry about upgrading it over time. This is going to take a little while, so we're just going to fast forward through the end of the uh, upgrade process. Okay, we're back. Uh, that took about five minutes, um, five to ten minutes, a bit longer than I uh, would have imagined. I guess five minutes. Um, we're back into a quick configuration wizard, which is going to run us through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, okay, select the services we want, um, address, date and time, administrator password, and disk configuration. So let's get on with things. So for the server name, I'm just going to leave that for the time being and I'll do, I'll fine tune all this stuff afterwards. Password. Default password as admin. Once again, I'm going to leave that. Here's original password. Yeah, perfect. So here they've got um, default NTP server set, set up for us, which is kind of them. I'm going to tweak that a little bit. Up, fr pool NTP, which will get us the internet um, internet time from uh, some place where we're close to, and set your time zone. Obtain TCP IP settings automatically via DHCP. Perfect. I am going to go through and set up a DHCP reservation for this afterwards, but for the time being, this will get us configured. Network services, I'd like uh, Microsoft networking, Apple networking, because as you can see, I'm using a Mac and I'm going to be setting up a time machine. Um, NFS, I don't really need it. I can use uh, SMB. Download station. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be starting with a single disk configuration. We are going to use ext4 um, um, file system, and uh, we're going to get the stuff copied over to uh, to this drive. Uh, I've got a nice uh, couple of Seagate um, green drives, uh, 5,900 RPMs, um, two terabytes each. And once I get the first drive set up, we're going to migrate it to a RAID one. Um, volume okay so what do we have here good 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 let's do it start installation all hard drives will be formatted One of the really cool things about this NAS is you can actually map um, ISO files directly um, so that they'll come up as browsable folders, um, shares, network shares, without actually having to, to burn the, the ISOs or use some form of uh, daemon tools or, or whatnot. Okay, so it's initializing hard disks. This is probably going to take a little while being as it's... So it's got the disks initialized, or the disk rather, um, seems just to be rebooting the system. It's taken about 15 minutes. Not bad considering it's a two terabyte drive. 